Hello, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Simon, and welcome to another episode of Vikings. Um, so we're about halfway through Season 2 now. Um, last episode, we saw Ragnar take back Kattegat from uh, El uh, Borg, which, um, or Jarl Borg. I keep saying El, Jarl. I know it's kind of the same thing, but I want to stick to one, so I'm going to keep saying Jarl. Uh, Jarl Borg, um, after he basically drew him out of the, the village and uh, into a trap where all of his shield maidens that had been brought along um, were able to basically force him to retreat. And instead of retreating back to Katakat, which, you know, again, um, he wouldn't have been able to defend, I don't think. Um, he went scurrying back to his lands. Uh, we got a little bit more of an insight as to what's going on with Athelstan. He's having these really weird kind of um, visions and sort of religious... Um, prophecies you know it's like he's seeing the virgin mary he's seeing the statue of jesus bleeding um and it's like okay this show obviously has a little bit of a more supernatural element to it because we've seen ragnar have similar kind of visions with the um the ravens and the crows whichever ones they are um and you know i, I don't know if it's just kind of like it's a very small part of the show if it's going to get bigger and bigger and bigger as it goes on um but it's definitely interesting um he is also struggling still with his faith. You know, we saw him at mass um, saying the words, going through the motions. But, you know, when he was given the, um, I think, is it like the cracker? Uh, he threw it away rather than eating it. And I don't know whether that's, um, you know, a symbolism of him actively rejecting Christianity or just a natural reaction because he's been with the, the Vikings for so long. You know, he's come to know their religion um, and he feels bad for leaving their religion, I guess. Um, Lagatha is back on her way to her husband. She left uh, Bjorn behind, um, who we got to see in combat for the first action in the last episode. He was pretty damned awesome. Um, you know, he has grown to be a really, really tall man. Um, he's taller than Rolo, taller than his dad. Um, I've got a feeling that once he's got a bit of battle experience, he's going to be a formidable warrior. Um, and being the son of Ragnar, Lothbrok, would you expect anything else? No. Um... So yeah, it's going to be interesting to see where we go here. You know, obviously the thing in England, I think, is going to focus on the invasion of Northumbria um, with the Vikings. Kind kind of less certain. Maybe they're going to go after Jarlborg, um and you know try and get revenge for what he did. Um, I doubt that they're going to be happy just to let him lie on his lands. Um, certainly, that any deal that they had is going to be over. Um, and obviously, you've still got the idea of the king. I'm assuming he's on his way back from England. Um, and it's going to be interesting to see what kind of mindset he is in. You know, Ragnar essentially left him. Um, and it sounds like he didn't have a good time after, you know, Ragnar left. So it's going to be interesting to see what he thinks of that. Anyway, let's jump into this episode. Find out what happens. Tell us, Amanda. What happened in England after we left? Oh, yeah. He's only brought one son back. Beckbert never meant to honor his promises to you. We were betrayed, taken by surprise. He fooled you, young girl. Never denounced his Christian God. He was our enemy. Um, Floki never trusted him or we liked him. Choice at his death. Sure. Ooh, it's a bit tense at the table tonight. What do you intend on doing now? What do you think, Ragnar? I intend on gaining revenge on King Egbert. Oh, really? As soon as possible. What about your book? I would be very happy to take part in it. Oh, shit. Oh, hello. It doesn't matter. I understand completely. And if I were you, I would feel the same way. But we must remember our agreement. And what it was for. The one that you broke. To raid. With your book. And to colonize. That was your dream, Ragnar. What are you saying? I think we should go back to Yarborg. No. He's he no longer as strong as he was. He's, he's never, never going to trust you. We need him. You cannot go west without his ships. No. Nope. And so once again, we should ask him to join our alliance. Uh-uh. Never ever going to happen. Don't listen to him. Yes. I agree with her. But who should go to Yarborg? I think it should be you, Rolo. That's not going to be a good thing. You know him better than anyone. Would 
you think? Nope. I think it's a horrible idea. Unless he's going to get him to kill Yarborg. What else could I have done? His father is Ragnar Lothbrok. Ah, you're too pissed to do anything, you fool. Who is this? Ragnar Lothbrok. Nothing but a windbag and opportunist. A man so bloated with self-importance he pretends to be descended from Odin. Well, why don't you go and ask him and find out? He doesn't need to pretend anything. Oh, shit. Come on, Lagatha. Oh. Oh, shit, man. She shouldn't have gone back. She should never, ever have gone back. The skull of my first wife. Oh, you kept it? She continues to advise me. That is creepy. That's it's creepy for this time. show. That's just so creepy and weird. Is he cracked? He thinks I should go. But they were pagans. They worshipped false gods. Never speak of our conversation to any other man here. Nobody else would understand it. Oh, so people don't know about the Romans. Except an interpretation that a race of giants once lived here. Interesting. <laughs> we have nothing to do with them. <laughs> no. Oh, that's creepy. Can we stop with the blood and the... What's going on with this? Monk. Speak Latin. Not many do. Your job will be to preserve these works and these. You also translate them. Fragments. For all eternity. Interesting. I like this this king. But if you ever tell anyone about them, I'll kill you. I will let them crucify you. I still can't believe this is happening. The last time those boats came up that river, chaos and death. I hope you were chilling with the truth. Oh, she's holding the skull. Why don't you ask her? Yeah, she doesn't like the skull. And treat them with respect. Of course, my lord. I'm just getting a really creepy feeling over this. Thank you. Especially considering the fact the episode title is Unforgiven. Sigi, I never once for a moment imagined Ragnar would take my advice and invite Yarborg to rejoin our alliance. Yeah, well, you screwed up in the first place, King. Ragnar is different. Can you keep a secret? <laughs> no. <laughs> At least he's honest. In the world. He's gonna shame her. Like Freya's breasts. The breasts of a goddess. Let me show you. Nope. Could you kill him? Yes! Yes! <laughs> yes! <laughs> Who else wants to go? 
<laughs> Bring it. Oh. Thank you. That was unexpected. You are a gentleman. <laughs> Maybe the fact that, you know... I think that because she... Well, I'll talk about it later. It's Ragnar's men. They're gonna burn them. All you folk in the barn! If you want to live, stay silent. Nothing will happen to you. Huh. Yeah, stay silent as you burn to death. Oh, fuck, what do we do now? Oh, shit. Oh, shit. She didn't seem especially panicked. Ooh. This was Ragnar's plan. Has awoken you. This is the cause of this. In here. Oh, I love this. They've taken justice into their own hands. Since you can sort with ego. Oh shit. No. And your rib cage will spring apart. Ah. Uh. <clears throat> no. Yes. Oh shit, Ragnar is not messing around. Can't end there. Ah! Yeah, I knew that Ragnar was not just going to sit there and go on a raiding mission with Jarl Borg. It's just not in his nature to forgive someone who would threaten his family like that, you know? He's all for cooperation and working together, but seriously, to go back and do something exactly the same as what they were going to do the first time, that's not going to work. Either Jarl Borg's going to jump on and kill you first, or you've got to kill him first. Um, no matter what he says, what, what he says about realising that they need to work together, it was never, ever going to work out. Um, and I'm surprised, I mean, obviously Ragnar must have just been thinking it's a way of getting him in to uh, the village to, to apprehend him, to save, you know, having to go and fight him in his own lands. Um, and obviously they were thinking, well, they can shove all of their men into the barn and burn them down, which was pretty, uh, I mean, as soon as they said put them in the barn, I was like, I kind of can think of what's going to happen here if it's going to go down that route. Um, and with the episode, the, the title of the episode being Unforgiven, I was thinking, yeah, there's absolutely no way that this is going to go down any other route than, you know, Ragnar being like, I don't forgive you. You're going to die now. That's exactly how I imagined it going, and that's the way it went. Um Again, more of these visions, you know, specifically from Athelstan, um, once again with the bleeding, um, and it's, it's like the stigmata, um, but very interesting to see that the the king, um, what was his name? I can't remember the name of the king of Wessex, um, had, you know, obviously uh, been keeping all of these relics from the Roman era, which um, if people, you know, people believe that giants roam the lands, um, they don't know anything about the Romans or the empires outside of you know, England, which is interesting. You know, I really like that king because he is hungry for more knowledge. He's hungry to know what it is that people have done before. And, you know, he wants to, to learn more about the world, which is great. Um, it's kind of very, a very refreshing attitude for this kind of era, I guess. 
Um, and again, shows them that you know people are just believing a, an altered version of a story that's not true. Um, you know, it's like they don't know anything about the Romans. They believe that. I'm assuming the Bible doesn't mention anything about. I mean, that, that's weird because I'm sure that the Bible mentions stuff about the Romans. I mean, I, obviously they'll know, they'll have known that the Romans existed, but they just didn't know that they invaded England. Um, and that's, you know, where it came from, because that would give power to pagans, I guess. Um, and if people thought that the pagans were strong, maybe that would in some way, you know, kind of lessen their faith. I think that's the worry. Um, but it's clear where Athelstan's going to be for the next uh, part of the season. He's going to be there decoding and, and translating all of the different texts, trying to figure out more about the Romans and what came before. Um as for Ragnar and Rolo, God knows what they're going to do with Jarlborg. It did not sound pretty. Um, I, it's really surprising because I wasn't expecting Jarlborg's story to end. And it may not end, but I think it will. But in you know, such a... Um, in su- just such a manner, you know, I thought it was going to be a battle you know, between Ragnar and, and Jarlborg. Um, but I guess it's good because it kind of, again, subverts your expectations and makes sure that, you know, you don't get complacent in thinking that you know what's going to happen. Um, Lagatha, let's talk about her. Um, I think it was a huge mistake, her going back. She should have known better than to think that her husband would have just accepted her back with no consequence. Um, he's clearly an unstable man. Um, and has a lot of anger issues, or had a lot of anger issues. Um, and, you know, for all of her courage and strength, she just couldn't overcome all of the attackers. But I am so glad that she took that knife and stuck it into her head, uh, stuck it into his head. I'm just surprised that the uh, the rest of the village kind of helped, or that one guy, but no one else seemed to intervene. And it seems to me that that village had fallen into, like, a really bad slump under his guidance. Like, no one there seemed to be celebrating. You, you look at the difference between Katakat and that village i don't know the name of it um and there's such a difference one is vibrant there's dancing there's singing there's drinking there's people laughing and the other one it's like a silent quiet hall where this one um y'all is just moaning and complaining and everyone just seems sad and dreary so maybe that's why maybe they've just grown sick of him and seen what he'd done to his wife who is this legendary wife of um of Ragnar and maybe that's again one of the reasons why they decided to help maybe the fact that she is the wife of Ragnar Lothbrok they were thinking you know she is a serious woman we need to protect her um but we'll see maybe she's gonna be in charge of that village that would be awesome Jarl Lagatha what is would the woman be called a Jarl I don't know but it was a really good episode I enjoyed it um anyway guys I hope you did too thank you very much for watching and I will see you for the next episode